Hi guys, welcome to another YouTube video. So today we'll be looking at a bowler by the name of Steven Vance, um, who in my opinion is actually one of the best two-handed senior bowlers that uh, hasn't been bowling that's non-competitive, right? like a non-pro bowler, because I haven't seen him on like the PBA 50 tour. But then again, I'm also not... Um, very actively watching the PBA 50 tour so maybe Steven has actually competed there but uh, not that I'm aware of but uh, for now he's the best non-competitive two-handed senior bowler that I've ever seen actually uh, Steven came into my attention when he was commenting on one of my uh, he was commenting on one of my videos when I was reviewing Patrick who was another American bowler um, a lot younger I was saying that Patrick actually has muscles his swing a little bit too much because he's a very strong bowler so actually Vance actually commented here that he's been a two-hander since the mid 1990s and uh, here are things that stick out to him he mentioned that Patrick actually bends too much at the waist that means too much spine tilt then it takes away from his arm swing um, which I kind of agree but I believe uh, why he might not be able to uh, get as high as arm swing is because I think, yeah, actually, I think Vance has a point. When you bend a little bit too low, your arm swing can't go, like, too high in a way when you talk about, like, the physical height of the body. Um, he's talking about his body, like, pointing too much to the, um, towards the right side lane, towards the right. Um, he was saying, trying to use 3, 4, 5 as his break point, gets it around 7. is because the ball hooks a little bit early. But anyway... So what stuck out, what struck out to me, so what stuck out to me was that uh, he mentioned that he had attached a video of him from comparison, which I watched, which playing a similar mind is more upright, and his ball specs are at fifty at fifty years old is at nineteen miles per hour at release, and with a ref rate of five hundred twenty five to five hundred and forty. So this is actually a very competitive ref rate and ball speed. You can easily see this kind of specs when you're talking about PBA bowlers on tour, right? When they're playing their TV shows. So this is a highly competitive uh, ball specs, ball speed and ref rate. So when I took a look at his form, um, the video that he had was from 11 years ago. So I have the video here. Yep. So for, for the viewers who are interested, you can just uh, search for Steven Vance and uh, you should be able to find it. His uh, username his YouTube username is at Vance836 uh, and I'll probably link his uh, channel and video in the video description below. So you can uh, visit his, his uh, YouTube channel, watch his videos and you know, we can learn a lot. So uh, actually I've been learning a lot from uh, trying to analyze his videos as well. So this was from 11 years ago. It's um, talking about now it's 2023, right? 11 years ago, I believe will be 2012. So it's all... Yeah, all the way back from 2012. So you can see why the visual video resolution is not as good because handphone cameras back then were not as a uh, high megapixel and you can see that there's a sick messenger there. So um, I've been measuring his ball speed. You can see the stats on top. I'm going to shift that. Uh, no, the stats down a bit. His, he actually, I measured his uh, ball speed in his latest video, which is um, this one, one of his latest shot titled Columbia Explosion. So this is latest shot. His ball speed measured that I personally time in this video is about 25 km per hour, which is about 16 miles per hour from the start of the foul line to the uh, to the timing that the ball touches the pins. So not as fast as he claimed, not really 19 miles per hour. Maybe it was 19 miles per hour because he said when he leaves his hand, Yep, but as he travels down the lane, obviously the ball will slow down because there's friction on the lane and the ball actually uh, curves, right? But generally speaking, if I were to measure just from the foul line to the pins, which is what I've been doing for all my other videos as well. So this is a way to keep it consistent is that he's, he measures about 16 miles per hour in terms of ball speed and which is amounts about 25 kilo, kilometer per hour. And uh, that is a very competitive ball speed. And if he's revving like over 500, uh, refs per minute RPM. There's a very competitive ref rate. You can see his you no know, power here when he when his ball goes through the pins. So he's able to send the ball all the way to like bot five. So he is definitely senior. He's he turned fifty this year. Um, he's eligible for the PBA fifty tour and he's an amazing bowler, right? And we're gonna talk about why he's such an amazing bowler. Like what parts of his physical game is really good uh, that we can learn from. So maybe I would. Speed this up to 1x. 
and let's see okay can i maybe make this a bit bigger okay maybe bring it the video a bit around here i was trying to make it big but it seems like kinovia doesn't want to listen okay Okay, speed it up to 1x so one thing about using Kinovia is that uh, pretty annoying is that whenever I you know, resize the video Kinovia actually speeds down the video so it comes to a point where there was a few videos that I didn't notice Kinovia was doing this like um, just willy-nilly and uh, it actually affected my analysis uh, and of the the videos like their speed of their videos as well so anyway this is yeah so he's actually throwing this at 25 kilometers per hour about 16 miles per hour and uh this is not his full approach but something i wanted to know where you can see from his approach is that he's definitely very fluid so he's been bowling for two-handed for more than but what was his his mention here 11 years can i take a look at the comments again yeah, since the mid 1990s. So, mid 1990s to now 2023, that means he's been bowling two handed for about 30 years, which is uh, as long as much, which is as long as Belmo has been bowling two handed. Because Belmo is, I think, in his 30s now, and he started bowling in two handed as a kid, you know, when it was like five to six. So, basically, Vance, Stephen Vance here, has as much two handed experience in terms of bowling years as Belmo. And it really shows when you look at uh, Steven's form, it is tremendously fluid, tremendously smooth. Let me go back to uh, like 100%. So you can see he's very smooth, very stable at the foul line. Now, obviously, he stands a little bit higher up, which is what he likes to do. He mentioned that he likes to actually be a little bit more upright because it helps him to project the ball a bit further down the lane. Uh, it's what he likes to do, which is fine because he looks really good doing it and he should continue doing it because the line that he plays is like crossing 15 at the foul line, 5 at the break point, and it goes in the pocket with such a... About, actually, about 17 at the arrows, 5 at the break point, and it goes in the pocket with such power that uh, I'm envious of this kind of ball speed and power. Okay, so what he does really good is that first he's uh, very experienced at it and he's very fluid. That's what I like to see. If we look at his other videos, the one from 11 years ago, then we can take a look at his full approach. Um, you'll notice that actually Steven does a six step approach. So let's take a look. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yep. So he does a very unorthodox six-step approach. Um, probably learnt it himself. That's what he's comfortable with. But with his six steps, he actually takes his steps pretty small, right? So every step or his six step approach, because he's walking more steps to the approach. So he's taking his steps smaller and quicker. So he still has quick feet. Quick feet is essential for two-handed bowling. And uh, his swing speed is also decently fast as well. So he's taking his spare shot here. Watch one, two, three, four, five, six. So even though he starts his swing pretty early, right? If we were to analyze the time that he starts his ball swing, he starts it at his third step, which um, in terms of five step terms would be our second step, right? So he has like the traditional like early ball placement timing places it out. But if you really analyze like on his third step, he, sw he swings his ball down because he places his ball a little bit high on his placement. So it gives the ball and the ball a little bit more time to be in the swing. So his swing goes a little bit longer and slower than most modern two-handers now who are keeping the like the swing really low and who are keeping the swing plane really short. So he has a higher swing plane. If you look at when he he's at the apex of his back swing. So at the apex of his back swing is here, he's actually only landing his fourth step. So if I use epic pen and he has a really high backswing, right? So he makes it. So for Steven, it is possible for him to have such a high backswing because here he has such a high backswing is going way beyond his hips. Um, no, which is very different from what I taught, right? I, uh, what I 
mentioned before is that I would prefer for bowlers to keep their backswing like close to their hips here. But in Steven's case, he has his backswing way above his hips. And the way he does this is that if you notice, he keeps his elbow bent. So because from what I've been teaching is that I prefer for new bowlers to keep their elbow straight in their backswing because it keeps their swing plane, um, like their flat spot easier to control. So in Steven's case, he actually keeps his elbows bent. And with your elbows bent, it's the, keeping your elbows bent is the only way you can have a high backswing as a two-hander. So he has a high backswing as a two-hander, considerably high for a two-hander. Um, obviously, it's very different from one-handers who can swing above the hit. So high backswing as a two-hander. And if you notice, for his timing, he's actually only landing his, uh, for his power step which is the second last step before the slide, when he's at the apex of his backswing, when the ball is at the top of the backswing. So if we play from here, like play the video from here. Okay, let me reverse it. Right, playing the video from here, this, this is taking his fourth step, then the ball reaches the height of his backswing. So when he starts his slide, is the moment that his ball starts going into the downswing. So from, from the top of the backswing, going into the downswing is where he starts his slide. So this is something which I think I myself, I have to work on because when I look back at my personal videos when I bowl, I notice that I'm actually going a little bit too um, too early into my, into my backswing. So it's something that I'll probably have to experiment. So I have to find time to bowl to experiment with you no know, changing my timing. But it seems that this timing really makes sense when I think about it because if I look at here, so that was from 11 years ago, right? If you look at Steven's form to today, so he has a very similar, exactly, I would say exactly the same form. So not much of him has changed other than his white hair. But as you can see here, the moment that he takes his fourth step is the top of his backswing. So he goes into the slide from this point on. So that means at the height of his backswing, then he goes into the slide. So this would be an extremely delayed swing in a way, very extremely delayed or even late timing in a way. So it's very interesting. Um, from here in this shot, we can't see his first few, first kind of like four steps. We can only see his like uh, third. Okay, we could see here that he places his ball here. It's really starting to go down in his fourth step in a way. Should I say fourth step? Because it's taking six steps. Uh, it's pretty confusing to refer to the steps. But basically the second of this, of a five step approach. So maybe I'll change it to referring to five steps instead. I'll ignore his first step. So his second step, he starts its placement. Then he swings his ball down on his third step. So it is, it has uh, traditional timing because at this point of his approach, if I reverse it using here, yep, here. So when his both his feet touches the ground here and here, his ball is exactly in between both of his feet. So we will call this traditional timing in his swing here. And as he goes back, so as he takes his like fourth step, because of his high backswing, his ball is still going up into the backswing. So once he lands his fourth step, it is at the height of his backswing again, this timing, and then he goes into his slide with his ball at the top of his backswing. Then he is able to power through, right? Transfer kinetic energy into the ball for that high ball speed and high ref rate. Something I also note that for Vance to create that kind of high ref rate, take note of how under the ball he is at his release. So as he releases his ball, as goes into the release on the downswing, he actually extends his elbow just like what Belmo does or all the top two-handed bowlers does. So initially he was pretty bent, right? And then as you see now, he actually extends a little bit more. So he extends his elbow as he goes into the release. And if we fast forward a little bit further at the release point, so right here at the release point, his elbows are basically perfectly straight. Perfectly straight at release. So he doesn't bend his elbow at release. He has a perfectly straight elbow in his release arm. And as he releases, look at how under the ball he is. Pay attention to his hand here. Uh, maybe I can zoom in. Yes, you guys see in the video. Okay, 
So again, you can see that on release, his uh, bowling elbow is ex is exactly straight. Bowling arm is actually straight, even though his backswing in his backswing his bowling elbow is bent. And take a look at how under the ball he is at release. Right, so that gives him that amount of power. And when you look at his release, he actually flicks his wrist. He unloads. So you can see here, as he as he releases, he unloads his wrist, and he snaps. So it unloads here. Unloads the ball from his cupped, fully cupped hand position, and then he follows through. Uncup. So and then he flicks his hand, his wrist through the ball after he unloads the ball. Unloads and then follows through, right? So that that is what that's giving him that high breath rate. Getting perfectly under the ball. So I will try and repeat again. So for that high ref rate, you have, to, you have to get your hand perfectly under the ball. And then as you release, unload the ball, just like what Van Steven is doing here. Unload and then follow through. And he has, you know, generates a lot of power. And it's so smooth, so much power, so much ball speed that it's, um, it's just a really great physical game. And um, it's basically... I, would, I wouldn't say unstoppable, but it's a kind of physical game that I would dream to achieve and I would really like to see like you no know, two-handers strive to achieve like this. So nothing much I have to complain about his game. Basically, Steven's game is kind of like uh, very inspirational to, uh, to me and I think believe to other two-handed bowlers as well because at age 50, he's due bowling like extremely well two-handed, like extremely high ball speed, extremely high ref rate, extremely fluid there's there doesn't look to be any signs of strain in his uh physical game and it's extremely inspiring because i also received another comment that um i have a bowler that is at 67 so a week ago um so another youtube comment appeared that he's uh, mentioned that uh he's 67 he switched to two-handed a year ago and he loves it so finally figure out getting behind the ball from he jumped from 140 average to 170. So yes, us old guys can learn new things. So definitely two-handed bowling is here to stay. It doesn't matter if you are young, you no, know, like you are in your twenties or in your like teenage years or 13, 14, or if you are a senior bowler like 50, 60, approaching 70, doesn't really matter. I mean two-handed bowling is here to stay. We can figure out um, how to adapt two-handed bowling to suit our needs and our age and our like body's joints flexibility and so on and um yeah let's so let's try and analyze the game together and try to try things out um see how we can improve the game of two-handed bowling and make it work for us so that everybody can enjoy like high high ball speed high ref rate lots of strikes and so on okay and um i believe uh, that's the end of this video so basically everything is good for Steven's game, I have nothing to complain about. I just want to say that um, bowlers like Steven is an inspiration to us to keep bowling two-handed. And um, yeah, and we shall see you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching.